Greetings. Today I want to talk to you about one, two, three blocks and why they're so important and why they're so useful in the shop. So one, two, three blocks, kind of by way of background, kind of gave were given birth to in a machine shop. Uh, pretty much every single machine shop on the planet uses one, two, three blocks. They use them for fixturing or for work holding, and they can also use them for, for inspection. But somewhere maybe in the past 20 years, these blocks started to become more popular in the wood shop, uh, DIY shops, and I think we found some really interesting uses for them. So they come, let me do, first of all, uh, what, what makes a one, two, three box so special? Well, they, they come one, two, they're sized one inch by two inch by three inch, but they're sized such that they're very accurately machined. So when you look at the size, the one, two, three, uh, dimensions, they're accurate to within one ten thousandth of an inch. Now you need to stop and let that hit you. That is a very small number. Actually, a red blood cell is three ten thousandths of an inch. So they're more, they're three times more accurate than the size of a red blood cell. And so they're not only accurate in size, but they're also accurate. They're parallel, they're straight, and they're square to within a couple ten thousandths of each of those dimensions. So they have a lot of uses. They're made from hardened steel, which means they won't dent. They can be scratched, but they're not dented easily. If you were to drop one on a concrete floor, you wouldn't, you wouldn't dent the block. So they're very robust. They come in several flavors. Um, like here's the 23 hole, probably the most common. It's got 23 holes in it. These weigh about a pound. Uh, the holes allow you to do a lot of things. Um, first, they decrease the weight, but also they allow you to attach things to it. They allow you to attach two together, and I'll show you how that works. Um, there's also the no hole. This weighs about two pounds, about twice the weight. Sometimes I want the mass there, and so these could be useful. There's a one hole version that has one hole in it. Um, they're just a little bit uh, lighter in weight than these. Then you can actually hook this down to things, or you can actually um, hang it, use it as a hole to hang it on the wall. There's actually these 11 hole ones, which are pretty interesting in that they actually have um, holes that allow them to be attached to one another. So you can actually put a bolt through this here and you can attach these things one to another in very limited configurations. Like I could attach them here. I have a few options on here, not very many, but you can attach them here where there's no exposed hardware, which is a nice feature. The downside to these is they cost about 50% more than the other versions because there's a little more machining involved. Um, but you can, you can put two together. But also remember, you, we have a hardware kit or a one, two, three block attachment kit right here that we sell. It's actually patented by Tay Tools. And that allows you to hook two blocks together without any external hardware like this here. And so for price of a set of blocks, you can buy the hardware kit for about the price, same price as, as this one here. So there's an option. So uh, they're very affordable. Generally a set costs you about 20 bucks of the cheaper ones. Um, they are, um, so here's here's the hardware kit. Um, this is the, the set of the hardware kit. Generally when you hook two together, you have to put a bolt through these and then there's a, there's a nut sticking out. So you can hook them together, but like you got this exposed hardware which kind of limits their usefulness in a lot of ways. But this hardware kit, all these little pieces here, you can actually, uh, put, they're embedded inside the block. And like when you, this is a, a configuration where we use the hardware kit. It's very robust. It's very, it's held very well. But I've attached two blocks together and there's no hardware exposed, which is a really nice feature. A um, couple other accessories you can get. You can get a set of uh, clamps that can turn these into corner clamps. You can clamp it here. And then I can clamp it to a board, between two boards, and I can hold something at 90 degrees. There's also some bent bolts we had made for us that you can put in the hole and then you can make a little wooden pad here and then you can use that as a clamp. You can make it, a, a, you can use them as corner clamps. There's also a dial indicator. I use this a lot. Sometimes I need to have accurate, accurate um, um, measuring at uh, surfaces that aren't magnetic. Well, this, this little base hooks to the table saw nicely, but it won't hook to my router table or my drill press. So I stick it to a one, two, three block. Then I could bring the tool right up to my router fence and I can move it a very precise dimension. So this is a really nice addition. So I believe that every woodworker DIY shop should have at least one pair of these. I feel like you'll find a lot of uses for them in the shop. I think they'll add a level of accuracy and that you can use. So uh, the next couple of posts, I'm going to go over some of the uses for these. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay, let's look at some of the uses for one, two, three blocks. Kind of the first one that I would kind of use is, I, I can use it for support for assemblies for like glue up. So let's say I had these two small thin pieces that I needed to glue up at a 90 degree angle and they needed to be very accurate. I can take a block 
and I can set one against the side here, and then I can set one on the top, and what this does is this holds this piece perfectly 90 degrees, so it's gonna be a nice clip, and then I can add my clamps if I want to hold it in place. One thing I would caution you about is just make sure to put a piece of tape on here, blue tape or something, so that if the glue contacts it, it won't rust it. But that's a great way to use for um, assemblies. Or if you want to, you can actually use these as corner blocks. So if you would like, you could actually take one of our clamps here and you can actually hold it in the corner here. You can actually um, clamp it here in the corner. So if you don't have a set of corner blocks, corner clamping squares, I can clamp that in here and then I can clamp this over here and then this can hold an assembly square while you're gluing it up or it could just hold pieces together while you're getting the clamps attached. But generally when I use these for an assembly, I just put one in opposite corners. I don't need to put one in every corner and then hold it square, hold things together so that I can get my clamps in place. Another option would be instead of these clamps, because these clamps cost a little bit, you get a set of these bolts, just an L bolt. Then you can add a little wooden pad here and then you get a 5 16 inch uh, knob and then you can actually take these and you can make little clamp pads out of them that hook right into the corner of the one, two, three block. And that can hold things together as well. So a set of these L bolts costs about the same as one of these clamps. So they're pretty cost effective. So there's a couple options for holding. You can also, um, if you're doing a bigger assembly, you can actually make a, make a bigger square at putting two of these together. And then you could use it as a corner block as well, just to hold things in place while you're gluing up. You can also use them to splice two boards together. Like let's say you needed to hook two of these together and you need it to be a nice good butt joint. You could hold these, you could probably put it like this. And then you could hook your clamp in there. You could hook your clamp in here and you could hold this piece down and you could hook two pieces together nicely and hold them in place while they're drying. So there's a couple options for just uh, work holding during a set for just to help you with assemblies. So that's a couple nice uses for one, two, three blocks. Okay, moving on <clears throat> with uses for one, two, three blocks, and that is calibration. Kind of the probably the most the most basic thing people use these for is to set their table saw blade to 90 degrees. You can also use it to set your band saw blade to 90 degrees, and you can use it on your joiner to set the fence at 90 degrees. They're great for that because they're super accurate more accurate than any machinist square. You can also use it to check your drill press to make sure that your drill bit is perpendicular to your table. You can also use it to check your machine square over here. Like if I buy a new machine square, I can check it for square to make sure that it's calibrated. Look, that's perfectly square. Um, you can also use it to check small boxes. Like if I'm doing a small box and I want to check it, make sure it's square in the corner, or if I'm doing a small opening on a drawer, that's too small for my larger square to fit in, I can put a one, two, three block in there and that can help. You can also use them, like I said, for assembly. When I'm assembling this, I can use it in the corner to keep things square. You can also use it to set your router bit height. If you're just on your router table, you raise your bit up. You, if you need it exactly an inch, you can set it up there. You can also use it to set the table saw blade height. You can also use it to set the distance from the blade to the fence. And you can set it up in a one inch configuration. You can set it up for two inches or three inches or if you wanted to get four inches, you just do this. Five inches would be here, six inches would be here. So you can use them on their very precise set of blocks. You can also use it on your router if you want to set the depth of the plunge. You can just use that here. You can set that here, put it in there, tighten it down. You got an exactly one inch plunge on your router. So those are uses for uh, calibration in the shop. In this case, I just took a little piece of wood and I drilled some holes and pounded in some rare earth magnets makes a little fence. Uh, I, I pound the magnets in just slightly below the surface and the friction just holds them in. I don't even need to use glue. Then this can attach to the to the block and I can use it now as a square. I can hook it on this side and use it as a square here, either to measure or to mark. Same thing here, I can measure a mark. I can let the square hang off one side. Another thing you can do is you can actually hook the square to the side of the magnet and you can actually use it as a pairing or a drawing guide and I could draw a line exactly one inch from the edge. This could be exactly two inches from the edge. This could be exactly three inches from the edge. And so you can also do a longer fence if you want. So you have a little bit of uh, hang over here. Uh, I made this so it, this will work on either the right or left side of the, of, the, of the block. And not only that, but you can actually hook a fence to this and you could use it as a pairing guide. I could hook a fence here and I could clamp this there and then this is a straight up and this block is kind of stayed in place, held in place. And I can actually take a chisel and I can pair straight down from this spot, which is really nice. Um, I've also made a fence here that's just 
piece of wood. There's no magnets. They're just holes drilled in it. And this is att attaches permanently to the block. I set it up so that it can either hang out to the right. The offset can be to the right or to the left on the long side and the same on the short side. So there's a couple more uses. Uh, one, two, three blocks, making them into precision squares. Uh, I find uh, the one, two, three blocks really useful when I want to measure distances when I move like my router fence, my router table fence, my drill press fence, things like that. So what I do, um, I could, I, there's a little magnetic base. This is a dial indicator by gauging. This is a magnetic base by Tay Tools. This will attach to a table saw bed fine. So I can use it on my table saw, I attach it to the outside of my table saw fence. And then when I want to make a very precise movement, like I'm doing a tenon, needs to fit very precisely in a groove, I can move this just that down to thousandths of an inch. The problem arises when I want to use it on my router table. It doesn't have a metal fence, or my bands or my drill press doesn't have a metal fence. So what I do is I attach it to a one, two, three block, and then it gives me a nice base that holds it in place very securely. And if I need to keep it from moving around a little bit more, I get the silicone pad. I got this off Amazon for I think five bucks for a couple of them. I just set it on a silicone pad and it provides a little bit of resistance. So the way I use this is I just set this on uh, on my router fence right where the bit is. And then I can zero this out. And then I can move my fence. I, I actually push it up against my fence. And then I zero it out. And then I can move my fence and it will read very precise. So see, I can push on this style indicator and the base doesn't move around. Same with the drill press. If I'm trying to drill a hole that's a very precise dimension from the edge or dead on center, I can set this up right next, right to a, the pokes right next to the bit on my uh, bandsaw fence. And then I can put it on this block and then I can move my fence a very precise dimension. Another thing you can do is you can take this block and you can set it up like this. And then you can, uh, you can zero this out. I can zero it out. And then I can use it as a height gauge. Then I can just put over here and measure this and look at it and see that it is 0.492 inches thick, this little piece here. So there's a couple uses. Oh, I, oh, the other use, another thing I could do with it is I can take it. Boy, it sticks hard. And I can put this here and then I can actually set this on my jointer. The bolt's coming loose. I can set it on my jointer, like on the in, on the outfeed side and I can zero this out and then I can move it to the infeed side and I can see how, what the difference is between my infeed and my outfeed table and I can know exactly how much I need to adjust it. So, Super useful to be able to attach a mini magnetic base with a digital dial indicator to a one through three block. It'll, it'll inject some accuracy into your shop that will really help the outcome of your projects. One thing that I've done and found helpful is I can use it as a drill guide. So like if I'm drilling holes, because it's so, so precise and this thing is heavy, it doesn't move around. If I'm drilling holes freehand with a hand drill, I can use it as a guide. Like I could set it up here. And I can set it, you know, so I can just see if it's if the hole's up and down. Then I can move my bit side to side and I can drill. Like when I was drilling dog holes on my bench, that one, two, three block came in handy. So you can use it as a drill guide. You can also, a 5 16 inch bit fits pretty nicely through these holes. You could actually use it as a guide for a 5 16 inch bit. Or if you needed to drill holes that were uh, a consistent distance apart, you could use it as that. So there you have it, using a one, two, three block as a drill guide. If you have a tape measure and you're like me, you drop it about 47 times a day and eventually this little little tab can get bent. And so it's nice to be able to calibrate this to see where it's at. So I use a one, two, three block for that. So I'll take this here and I'll set it up against the block and I'll see if it measures exactly three. If it doesn't, then I know that I need to bend this tip and reset my tape measure. Another thing I can do is if my table saw is off, like see, I just adjust the fence. I will take this block and set it between the blade and my fence, and then I can go over and look at my cursor and make sure my cursor reads exactly two inches or three inches or whatever distance I've placed the block from the blade. So you can use it to calibrate machines. Okay, one more potential use for the one, two, three block is at the table saw as a stop block. So when you're cutting parts with your miter gauge, you need to have some space after once your piece is cut off, there needs to be some space here or else this piece can come shooting back at you. So one, two, three blocks are perfect for that. And what makes one, two, three blocks so perfect is that they're exactly one inch. So when you set your table saw fence, you just need to add one inch and you'll get a perfect size. So one thing that's a problem is that the block, it's heavy enough to sit there, but if you move your fence, the block doesn't move with it. So that's why I made this little jig, pretty simple piece of wood, seven eighths thick 
and it's got a hole here with a little bolt in here and this thing fits right on top of the block there's a cutout that's a little bit that's just about the exact same size as the block and what this does is when I push it against my fence I put a fence clamp in there and it actually pushes it against the fence and it and it holds it really tight now remember the block is just proud of the back side here so this is how it works I put it against my table saw fence And then I hook that clamp there and that holds it in place. So now I can use it as a stop block. And when I move my fence, the block moves with it. So that's one more use, one, two, three blocks. Okay, let's now take a look at what it would look like if I could attach more than one, one, two, three block together. And you, if you can do that, you can magnify their usefulness. And this is a, an 11 hole version. And these are designed to be hooked together. You actually put a machine screw through this hole here pokes out here and then it can grab the threads on the other block. The downside is there's only a limited number of configurations possible with this. You can do a few here. And then some of the configurations only allow you to put one bolt in there. So this thing could actually pivot on there. The other thing is these blocks are a lot more expensive. They're about 50% more expensive than say this 23 hole version here. So you can get a set of 23 hole blocks and you could buy our one, two, three hardware kit or one, two, three block attachment hardware kit. And then this kit allows you to hook any two blocks together with no fastener sticking above the surface. So let me show you, okay, by way of background, you can hook to them together with just a bolt. Like this is a quarter inch bolt. I could stick this through this block here and use a nut on the other side and that would hold them together. I could get some usefulness, but you got this hardware sticking out and then you'd have to have all kinds of length bolts around to accommodate different configurations. You'd have to have a different length bolt for this, and for this, and for this, and for this, and for this. And so you'd have this whole bunch of bolts. Our kit actually works and allows you to hook two blocks together in any conceivable configuration. I went through and tested this and there's no configuration that I could come up with where I couldn't hook two blocks together securely um, with just this little simple hardware kit. They got these four round nuts, you got six screws, you got a little a little screwdriver here, and you got the Allen wrench comes with it. Everything you need. So let's look at what some of the ways uh, you can hook them together and what you can do with that. This is a corner block. This can be used as a clamping square. I can put it in the corner of an assembly, and I can put um, some clamps on there and hold it square while I'm assembling or while I'm getting my clamps fixed. I can also check to see if things are square. I could use it as a as a support. I could put a piece of wood here and, and clamp it there, and it could hold it up in place while I'm do an assembly, or even while I'm on my drill press, I could take a board here and hold it straight up and down while I'm trying to drill a hole that's straight in from the top. Um, it can also be used as a drill guide. I could use this here and put a drill bit in the middle and I could drill a hole straight down. So it has usefulness there. Um, you could also do a, you can use it as a shoulder square. I could use it as a, sh I can put it on a piece and then I could set it up and I could mark both sides at once. So both both marks line up perfectly. I could also use it as a, to hook, to hook two together and I could make a mini straight edge. So for 20 bucks, the price of two of these, I could hook two together and have a six inch straight edge that's pretty accurate. So there's just a couple of uses uh, when, for hooking two blocks together. I'm sure if you were to have these in their shop, uh, a couple of blocks and a set of a hardware kit, you would find numerous other uses.